Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games, and welcome back to another Kaiserreich guide, the weekly Kaiserreich guides here on the channel uh, for Hearts of Iron 4. This guide is relevant as of Alpha 0.61. As a heads up, I was just told uh, before recording this video by the developer of Iran that it is going to be nerfed before... The, I mean, by the time of the next patch. So I am not 100% sure as to how relevant this video will continue to be. Because I don't know if that nerf means there's going to be focus tree changes or if it means that there's going to be some military changes. And the, the one chosen by the Patreons is going to be Iran, a.k.a. Persia. Uh, the sublime state of Aram, although not directly involved in the Weltkrieg, still bears scars from its past. The Famine of 1919, a product of British and Russian occupation, led to the deaths of millions of Iranian citizens the years since marred by tribal revolutions and an attempted assassination of the Shah, who survived but lies on death's door. Uh, doorstep. If his time comes, a power struggle is inevitable, and Republicans, Socialists, and Royalists alike may try to seize power for themselves. Whatever the outcome, many look to the future with hope that someday Iran will once again return to regional hegemony. So we're gonna we're gonna have them be our. Uh, that's yeah. We're gonna select them, obviously. So Iran, very interesting country. I think uh, one of the better ones that has been done here in 0 0.6. It uh, definitely has that characteristic, which I really personally find enjoyable in a, in a Kaiserite country, in a minor Kaiserite country, where you can start small, but uh, with a little bit of luck and a whole lot of skill, you can turn yourself into a regional power. So thank you, as always, to the Kaiserite team for all the work that you do do. All right, there's a lot to go over here. Uh, it's going to take a little while before I actually get to the political stuff because I'm going to be repeatedly going down these a few times so I can explain the different paths that are possible to take. First off, three research slots. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, you're not terribly technologically advanced, although you do already have Mountaineers uh, research, but, for example, you don't have support equipment. You don't have any sort of tanks beyond the uh, the Veldkrieg era ones. You barely have any sort of a navy. You virtually don't have any kind of an air force uh, to draw on, things like that. As far as your air force goes, you actually don't have one. Same with your navy. It's basically just these ten pre Veldkrieg destroyers and a couple of light cruisers, and only one admiral that you can assign to them. Uh, so for two of your military branches, you don't have a whole lot going on. Currently, there are 12 divisions, a couple of cavalrymen, and then the rest are infantry, either with support artillery in them or just your standard divisions. Uh, as far as your military uh, generals go, your commanders, you have a quite actually quite a few generals to choose from. You have a huge variety available to you here. You're going to have... Uh, you know, of course, your tank leaders, river leaders, hills and mountains, very nice, uh, infantry leaders. Uh, I think you have a guerrilla warfare guy right out of the gate. Yeah, right here, guerrilla fighter, fortress busters, and so on and so forth. So you actually have quite a variety to choose from. Uh, only two field marshals, Reza here and Hassa, uh, Mirza Kajar. Apologies in advance for all pronunciations as usual. Kajar is the, the less good of the two. You may keep him, you may not. I'll talk about why later. Uh, okay, so we've done the research slots. Civilian factories, you've only got eight, and five of them are being used by consumer goods, which uh, it's 45% of your factories being used up by that at the start of the game. As far as resources go, you do have some oil, so you could potentially end up getting a few more, uh, oil, a little bit more oil uh, via trade. I mean, a little bit more oil via trade, a little bit more... Uh, civilian factories via trade as it goes on. Military factories, you've only got four and no naval dockyards, so you can't increase the size of your navy just yet. Uh, all right. And yeah, that, that, that covers the, the basics there. So you have a few uh, interesting... You're kind of at this midpoint between two different regions of the world you of course have the uh the india uh, subcontinent unification that's going on over here and to the west the ottoman empire is slowly dying and attempting to maintain its tenuous grip over the the eastern mediterranean and you as iran because you could border both of these areas could potentially become uh, a major player in each of these conflicts uh, as we'll see as we make our way through the focus tree so your focus tree is divided into a few different sections as usual. Some of these you're not actually allowed to go down just yet, not until you have done certain things. For example, uh, while you can expand your army funding right away, in fact, let's just 
If you did do that, you actually cannot go past that because you have to actually pick a government that is going to be in power. Uh, right now, the Social Democrats are in control of the country, but that can change pretty quickly uh, by about May, June of 1936 at the very latest. So you have to do those sorts of things before you can choose who you're going to cooperate. So for example, you can uh, modify your national spirit disorganized military by working with the Germans. In fact, let's talk about that, your national spirits. You're undergoing a political crisis, so that's bringing your stability down by 20%. Remember, we are now in a new version of Kaiserreich. It's been, it's been since the Waking the Tiger update came out. So now stability and war support is a thing. Uh, so it's minus 20% uh, cut down because of that. Let's not forget, uh, in Kaiserreich, your stability up here is going to affect your stability down here. Right now, you're in an average stability, but you go to uh, very low stability if you have less than 25% stability up here, which is going to hurt you negatively as far as consumer good factories, factory output, and etc. go. These are actually really, really horrible hits you take, and then you can go to disaster if you find yourself going under 0%. Although, if you get above 65%, you go to 60, uh, you're, you're going to get the good stability effect. Uh, something to, to know though to keep in mind originally in Kaiserreich it always was kind of a risk if you decided to pay the political power to get up here to good stability or very good stability here now they have uh, created this effect where if you're at good or very good stability every week your stability will actually drop so these uh, these bonuses you get it, it you cannot reach this point where you eventually just have so much political power you can go to very good stability and stay there forever it's eventually gonna go away uh, Unless you can, unless you're actively fighting to keep it up. All right, disorganized military. The strategies and tactics used by our military are dated, leading to disorganization and a lack of innovation in our armed forces. Basically, this means plus 40% land research time, less planning speed, and less division organization, all of which are obviously bad. You're dealing with a lingering famine. This is the famine that happened in 1919. Uh, so less construction speed, significantly less recruitable population. As you can see, we've only got 20 uh, thousand uh, troops to draw upon right now and more consumer good factories a corrupt aristocracy which is lowering uh, your daily political power and you've got unruly cons basically uh, local tribal leaders in Iran which are uh, ruling the country in a similar way to the how the warlords are in China uh, but of course not not to the point where they are autonomous such as say the Yunnan click or the Ma click are out here so uh, get, getting back to what I was saying, you need to choose what are, what are your major foreign policy decisions are basically going to be. Are you going to go with the Germans? Are you going to go with the Commune of France? Or are you going to go with Austria uh, as far as this goes? Uh, now, this doesn't mean that you are necessarily joining an alliance with them to do that. Uh, but each of them has their own conditions. So, for example, if you want to work with the Germans, you either need the Democrats or the monarchy to be established. Uh, it is possible for you to go um, socialist, uh, specifically radical socialist, and of course the Germans are going to have a big problem with that and they're not going to want to work with you. Uh, but over here, if you have the monarchy or the Democrats you, in power, you can also work with Austria. Of course, these things are mutually exclusive, but if you were to go up here, for example, and uh, you can see your naval branches here, you could, in theory, work with Germany for uh, increasing the uh, strength of your navy. Incidentally, Germany is the base strike doctrine. Uh, France would be the fleet and being doctrine. And then uh, the Swedes over here are the... Uh, trade interdiction doctrine but you could in theory uh work with the austrians and with the uh the germans if you wanted to mix and match like that or you could work with the swedes and the germans or the austrians and the swedes and things like that it's only really by going uh radical socialist that you sort of pigeonhole yourself in here uh so uh they give different types of bonuses initially they're each going to fix one thing in uh as far as your disorganized military is concerned so for example, if you were to work with the Austrians, uh, and then you, uh, yeah, this this is gonna uh, increase your division organization, uh, which is gonna negate the negative effect of it here. The Germans are gonna give you the planning speed back, and the French are gonna fix your land doctrine research time, so they're gonna return it to normal. Of course, when you then continue to go down, you've got other things that are gonna be negated. But whatever, it's it's essentially you have to choose your primary goal. And it'll get instantly fixed. 
and then the second uh, focus you take is going to fix the other two, but not completely. So if, again, for example, if you went with Germany, Germany is going to fix your division organizational problems, and then it will slightly reduce the negative effects on your planning speed and land doctrine research time and then rinse and repeat for the others you then also are going to get your research slot down here uh, that's not uncommon where if you go down military branches you have another research slot just land doctrine stuff here mountain stuff and then again you have to choose uh who you're going to work with you already made that choice up here so the austrians give you artillery this is infantry and this is armor technology so this is sort of related to uh whatever your land doctrine is although you can again get german iranian cooperation here and then austrian engineers down here then uh this is that uh, don't get confused by this because it has the little beaker here but this is actually going to reduce your infantry equipment production and then eventually you finally reform the military which is going to give you more organization and planning speed which could be stacked up which could turn them into things that are stronger than normal or it could just ultimately negate the negative effects of what you had before depending on uh, how this goes. And you're also getting war support periodically as you continue to go down this tree. All right, coming back over here to the Navy stuff. Uh, pretty straightforward. Kind of strange, though. Why doesn't why does Austria the, the one you talk to for the Navy? <laughs> uh, but it's just straightforward, getting dockyards, uh, getting getting bonuses for your research. It's not very great, any of it, really. The, the foreign naval engineers here is kind of interesting because it just reduces the production costs of basically everything, as well as giving you some naval experience. But besides that, there's nothing too special going on down here your air academy again mostly pretty basic the main interesting ones here are your local air production which is going to lower your fighters production costs and you get the iranian airspace uh which is not quite as good as the bonus that the japanese get but you do get extra air attack and range no extra agility though although a new generation of aces at plus 20 percent is pretty sweet but besides that they're pretty they're pretty simple uh nothing too complicated so eventually you are going to get hit with Black Monday, uh, which will happen oh, a little bit over a month into the game. So you, you, you have time to take another focus or something. Your first recovery plan, once you take that, is going to begin to lower the effectiveness of uh, how hard Black Monday is hitting you. And then you just start going down here and choosing what you want to work on. These are not all mutually exclusive. And in fact, to get the renewed trade initiative, you only need to go down one. But you could, for example, take the mining expansion, get your steel, get your infrastructure, and then come down here and take trade initiative. And the reason why you might want to skip all, uh, skip the other two branches and come down here to uh, Doshaben Sia Resolved is because that's what's actually going to get rid of the Black Monday spirit. Uh, you then could go back, get yourself some oil. N none of these are really amazing. Uh, the ones here on the left also get rid of the famine, so maybe that's the one you're going to want to do first. And uh, don't think that you have to take the Astan Kuds Razavi to take uh, modern agriculture. The dots mean that you can go either way. So you can go down here, get the Sheik's Wealth, and then do modern agriculture, for example. So let's uh let's start taking some focuses here uh so then i could talk about uh the events over here uh government reform it might be a good strong first one to get it does give you that political power political powers are always nice it's also going to give you quick access to your extra research slot so this is kind of like the commune of france where you can get another research slot very quickly and you're also going to get that reduced research time along the way mandatory nizam service is very important uh because this can save you political power because it is automatically going to t take you to the extensive conscription. So depending on when you want to take that or how quickly you want to do it, you probably will not want to actually spend any political power on moving to extensive conscription since you can just come down here and the game is going to do it for you. The uh, And I... Actually, I just realized I never tested this, but if... Uh, I think it just gets bypassed if you're above extensive conscription or added already, but I actually don't know. I didn't test that. I'm so sorry. I just realized that. Uh, tribal appeasement is where you're going to get rid of the, uh, where are they, unruly cons, which is lowering your war support and consumer good factories. So basically, that's a plus 10% war support, plus, uh, minus 5% consumer good factories. Child Labor Act gives you more political power, but it's going to actually reduce your factory output. I don't know if that means, uh, um, I don't know if that means... The kids are just 
not as good. I'm sorry, they're not. It's not that the kids are not as good. The kids are getting pulled out of class, so you're you're getting less output. Uh, anyway, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm tripping over my tongue today. What is the deal? All right, so you've been hit with Black Monday. Let's just take a look at what that actually entails. So Black Monday is reducing your factory output, construction speed, and production efficiency cap. It's not the worst case of Black Monday I've ever seen in Kaiserreich, but it's not great, and it's something you definitely don't want to be hanging around for too long. Yes, yes, Afghanistan. You're going to get some refugees that cross over, and you can get some manpower. It's not a big deal, honestly. Uh which one of those events that you pick it, it truly is not and remember this is just an introductory guide okay so I'm, I'm just waiting for this government reform to finish right now because i wanted black monday to uh to come in and we're going to be going back through some save files in this uh in this guide of course so that i could start talking about the the political stuff but the main thing down here is uh, you're gonna have a split the split is not something you actually choose after the child labor act you can only take the uh, the women's rights if the revolution has happened and you can only take traditional va uh, values if the monarchy has happened so this way for women's rights this way for traditional values and so the traditional values is gonna eventually give you more political power stability and war support uh, the women's rights is gonna this is kind of a more defensive thing because you get more division defense on your core territory so and also these two it's just you want stability or factory output that's really all there is to it uh, okay so now we've finished the first focus we were and black monday is now hitting us we're just making a save file because i also just remembered i forgot to do that i'm so busy i'm just uploading so much to the channel lately all right now you can go Sheik Kazali's Wealth. Uh, this basically is you deciding what kind of bonuses that you want. So you just ask this guy, give me money. And if you get it, you're going to get some oil. Uh, you're going to get some, well, yeah, basically you're going to get more oil because you're going to get more re uh, resource gain efficiency and you get a little bit of political power. Or you could just get rid of him entirely, which means you get the oil directly. So instead of getting a, mul a, a multiplier or an additive to your research gain, you're just going to straight up get the extra oil and a civilian factory. Uh, but this is going to cost you stability, war support, and political power. So you just need to decide which one of those you want to take. I was just clicking one. Don't read into it. Uh, same thing over here. It's an event. Neither of these is mutually exclusive. It's just you need to pick and choose what you want. Do you want to get some permanent additional daily political power gain and additional construction speed? Or do you want more construction speed with less stability, but you're also going to get more building slots and this costs you 100 political power? So what basically both of these are doing is, is they're asking you, are you willing to trade political power for building slots? And as, a re as I ran, you really do not have that many here. Um, uh, as you can see, the most you have, and this was after I already took the other event, is you've got five here in Tehran. You don't have very much infrastructure, and you do not have very many building slots at all. Most of these, uh, you know, some of these you can't even build in. Like in here in Kiraman, you can't build anything. Um, but uh, taking this, you're going to get some... Uh, wait, no, they're... Uh, they're Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. Where is it? Oh, right here. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you can seize the wealth here. So, like, for example, there's no building slots here. Once you seize the wealth, you should be able to build there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's this one. This is the one you get it in. I'm, I'm, blah! Ah, I'm going to end up re-recording this at this rate. Okay, so, modern agriculture, I'm just demonstrating. You see, this opens the path down to here. So, again, you do not have to take all nine of these before you can move on and get rid of Black Monday. All right, let's talk about the big one. The Shah is dead. Let's first disable that. All right, so the Shah is dead is going to kick off in May, and you're going to get uh, a couple of options here. I hope everybody likes the loading screens. We're going to be seeing this a few times. So there's, uh, there's two options uh, after the Shah dies, and the question is, what are you going to do with Hassan uh, Mirza? Uh, you see, he's technically not dead yet, the, the Shah, because I haven't actually uh, clicked the thing. But he can either choose to flee the country or stay in Iran. And uh, there's a few different ways that this can go. But essentially, what you are trying to decide is um, how, which path do you want to go? Do you want to go with long live the Shah, and then you can either go into a reinforced constitutionalism, which is going to make your country authoritarian democratic. You can do Wrath of the Qajar Lion, which is going to make you paternal autocrats. 
you can have a revolution which will lead to the radical socialists taking power, or you can say long live the republic, in which case the social democrats can stay in power. Uh, the tree is deceptively simple. It might seem more complex than it is because you're going to be hit with all sorts of different events. But I've actually been given access to Iran's event structure by the Kaiserreich dev in charge of Iran. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're gonna. I'm just going to show you one of the ways to get down each of these paths. So let's first say that you wanted uh, to make a, uh, a constitutional monarchy. You can have Hassan Mirza flee. Now, once he flees, he's still actually technically there. And you're going to get this event pop up. What happens now? Although Hassan Mir Mirza has decided to flee Iran, there are many people still loyal to him willing to fight. We could command these people to storm the Mizhe... The Majlis, in order to, to keep order and capture any potential threats, we could also send these people to capture key points to Tehran to try and secure power. However, Hassan Mirza could also not command the people at all and try to keep peace. All right. So uh, let's say, okay, we're, we're going for the um, reinforced constitutionalism first. Uh, so if you don't want any violence, you will just send the loyalists to capture uh, key points in Tehran. Politicians are ready to fight Hassan Mirza. And you'll have the civil war in the cities. I'm so sorry, did I say this is way without violence? I said with, vi <laughs> with violence, ugh. Okay, basically you are then just gonna have a series of, there's technically a civil war going on in Iran right now and you're gonna have a series of these pop-ups. It's not gonna be an actual war and you just need to choose who you want to win. So we are gonna be wanting the loyalists to win. So in each one of these fights is uh, reducing your base stability. So as you can see, you've now got the downfall of stability because we just hit 25. All right, loyalists, loyalists, loyalists. There's a few of these and loyalists. I think that's all of them okay into the fighting the winner is the loyalists so he's still in charge and a constitutional monarchy will be formed you will notice that uh the national focus bar is not even filled up yet so uh don't worry about having to take another focus or something you might as well just wait and now you can take long live the shah so the, the long live the shah is going to give you a little bit of political power and just like long live the revolution it takes 35 days and it's going to give you 150 political power after this is done you will then get access to one of these two options because we went this particular path it is going to uh, lead us to a reinforced constitutionalism and the only reason i'm not going to say file is because i want this to play out so you can see exactly what i'm talking about by the way, the only thing you've got here really is police crackdown. As far as decisions goes, I don't think decisions are going to be implemented until uh, 0 0.7. Come on. Come on now. Is the music on? It's kind of quiet. All right. So you've got long lived the Shah. And notice reinforced constitutionalism is your only option. You are not allowed to take the wrath one. And that's going to set you on that path. The reinforced constitutionalism is going to give you more stability, more political power, and uh, yeah, that's basically the path it's going down. Kind of think of this like um, the National French Tree, where the different paths give you different bonuses. And uh, unless you're concerned about role playing uh, as a certain, and, and, I, and hey, role playing is great. I definitely encourage it. Uh, think less about the party ideology and more about what kind of bonuses do you want. So the authoritarian Democrats give you a lot of stability and a lot of political power. Now, let's talk about uh, how do you take the wrath path. So the wrath path, I, as far as I can tell, only has one way to get there. Uh, so the Shah has to flee, first off then you are going to send the loyalists to the Maj. Let's a little time go by. The loyalists are gonna st uh, storm it, power to the Shah. Low popularity, whoops. <laughs> Low popularity. Okay, and as soon as this recovery plan focus is done, as you can see, by the way, the paternal autocrats are in charge. And so once you are done with the long live the Shah, 
you're going to be able to get access to the Wrath of the Kajar Lion. So this is also going to give you stability uh, initially, but this is also kind of defensive. I guess all I guess when you really think about it, all of the ideologies are going to give you some political power, some stability, some defensibility, and things like that. But while you initially you're going to get some stability, uh, the loyalty reinforcement is going to give you more daily political power gain, but lower your stability once more. You're going to get more division attack on uh, and defense on the core territory, and then you're going to get a huge 200 political power boost right here. So this is good for some immediate gains, and uh, if you're going to be playing, if you feel that you're going to be getting a, 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 a defensive game going. All right, that's still not quite done. So both of these lead to the legacy of Aga Khan, which gives you more stability and 2% recruitable population. You then are going to have access to uh, these various conquering focuses. All right, so yeah, long live the Shah, Wrath of the Qajar Lion. So that is the only way, as far as I could tell, that you can get uh, the paternal autocrats in charge in Iran. Let's now take a look at the more leftist side of the trees. So Shah is dead. Come on, come on, come on. So if you don't want violence, you can have uh, Mirza flee. And whether he flees or not, you, you're always going to be getting this what happens now. Uh, and so we're just not going to stir up any trouble. So Mirza gives no command and he leaves. Could the Khazar, could Jars lose their power? And the Democrats and Socialists will combine forces. So you're going to have this leftist uh, organization. You then have this revolution. Do you want the Democrats or the Socialists to form a republic? And that's all there is to it, really. So let's, let's make another save file right there. Let's have the Democrats form a republic this time. Democracy prevails. You're going to lose uh, him as your field marshal, of course. So you've only got the one. And now... You can do the Desolation of the Sun Throne. Look up the Sun Throne. Interesting artifact. I don't have time to talk about it here. So, uh, going down the Long Live the Republic. More stability, but less political power coming in. And you're going to get rid of the corrupt aristocracy much quicker. Notice, you see how these are quicker to go down. And then, either way, it leads down to the People's Constitution, which gives you stability and political power. And then, Shining Democracy, which gives you political power. So, kind of, the Paternal Autocrats give you it in a big chunk. Going Democratic gives you political power over time. And this uh, this adds uh, this opens up these bottom focuses again. So if we just immediately go back, <sighs> sorry, a water drinking ASMR. You can instead form a socialist republic, uh, specifically radical socialist. All right. Oops. Let's let it run for a while. Socialist form government, victory for the workers, and there you have it. So, revolution. More stability, but less political power. You can then choose to remove the opposition, and it's basically... We can purge them. Okay, wait, I actually probably should read this out. Ever since the revolution took place and the socialists seized the government, there has been one central question, whether we should work with politicians of the previous government or whether we should completely remove anyone from the previous government to complete the full revolution. The previous government, although having the Qajars be a strong force, was a social democratic one, proving that the politicians are able to somewhat work with us. However, there is the chance that these reactionary forces, if kept in government, will try to corrupt and inevitably destroy the revolution. Although in the short term, purging the government will have a dangerous effect. In the long run, it might preserve the root of the revolution permanently so let's say you purge them you now are going to get revolution instead of evolution so you're going to remove all ideas that are related to the market liberals social conservatives authoritarians and democrats uh so as you can see here you, you still have the, uh, the Socialist Republic of Iran in charge, crushing the bourgeois. So you see this was talking about the short term. So you're going to get a lot less stability and a lot less daily political power. And this leads to the people's constitution. But if we were to go back yet again, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at what the evolution tree does. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right, Socialist Republic. Socialist form government. And revolution, revolution, socialism. 
better than the reactionaries. So you'll get more stability and more daily political power gain right away. And then you can reform the uh, bourgeois. So you have this corrupt aristocracy one. Let's not forget that, which is lowering your daily political power. If you go down this way, it gets rid of it. But if you go over here, it is replaced by additional daily political power gain of 0 0.2. I leave it to you all to do the math and stuff to decide which is going to be best for you. Then you get Beacon of Socialism, and again, it opens up everything. So let's start talking about uh, these different claims and goals you can get here. So you have, basically you have all these claims that, uh, that are based in the idea that Iran, at some point in its history, sometimes it's just in the last few years, few decades, sometimes it's citing claims that are hundreds of years old. Uh, where you can then get goals against essentially all of your neighbors. So, for example, the Pashtun question, if you take that, you can declare war on, uh, whoops, you, you can declare war on Afghanistan, for example. You can't take any of these unless you're at peace. So you can't just stack them all up uh, and just get claims on everybody. While, well, I guess you could stack them all up if you're getting claims, but take, take the time to read and make sure you're knowing which ones are... Uh, giving you claims and which ones are actually uh, sending you into a war. What I think is the most interesting one here is uh, the an imperialist free India. This is unique to the beacon of socialism. Uh, you have to be at peace and you can form an alliance with the Bharatiya commune, which I think is really cool. I like the idea of, a, of like an Asian uh, commune, something that's opposed to the third international. Uh, I think it's very interesting. Uh, all right, so basically, you, you get you get you're gonna get claims on the, on Turkestan, on Iraq, on Azerbaijan, on the Dominion of India, on Armenia, and on Georgia. Oh yeah, and uh, Bahrain. Of course, these are all areas that are usually um, also being claimed by other people. So, for example, um, let's say you were to annex all of India. That's a little weird because the commune has its claims. Incidentally, it's a, it's this area that Iran is claiming. Uh, if you are going to be going into Turkestan or into Azerbaijan and Georgia, eventually Russia is going to come looking for that land. So that is a big problem that you have to worry about. And even then, even if you don't advance into Georgia, let us not forget that uh, there is this Middle East direction that Russia will usually go in at some point during the game. So that's something else that you have to be watching out for. Um, so that basically sums up most of Iran. All right, now let's talk about the war with the Ottomans. At some point in early 1937, you're going to get the Cairo Conference where the Sultanate of Egypt is going to invite you to come over. Uh, and then you're going to get a series of events where the essentially the, the, the countries that are most likely going to be attacking the Ottomans, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the Sultanate of Egypt, and some rebel people from Tripolitania are going to uh, present you with a series of decisions. Uh, basically... You're trying to see you. You can choose to become friendlier with all these people by supporting certain plans, um, and then it makes it that much more likely that the Sultanate of Egypt is going to ask you to help fight in the war when the time comes to attack the Ottomans. There is no really set time for the attack on the Ottomans to happen, but there is a time after which it becomes possible. So. The Egyptians, you're going to want to keep an eye on this, have a focus uh, called the Cairo Pact, which they're not even allowed to take until after the 1st of May 1937. Once they have completed that focus, which takes 56 days, they've got two 35-day focuses, which are basically just them preparing for the war. Uh, they could support the Arab rebels and then destroy the Ottomans is just a three-week focus. Once they take destroy the Ottomans, that is when the war against the Ottomans will begin. So if we look at another save file here. Let's see, I believe this is the Union of Britain poster. Come on. Why is my computer going so slow today? Okay, so uh, anyway, the Egyptians are going to want to call you into the war here. See, the Ottomans are weak recently. Egypt has declared war on the Ottoman Empire. They had just finished up their focus for that, and so you can then choose to go to war. If you do choose to go to war, of course, the war will begin instantly. And that's really all there is to it. So what happens after the war? Of course, you're going to be having the uprisings and stuff. And keep in mind, you're not actually a member of the Cairo Pact. 
when you do this. You're just also going to war with the Ottomans. So uh, during the course of the war with the Ottomans, depending on what you occupy, you are going to be uh, presented with several decisions regarding how the former Ottoman Empire is going to be chopped up. So you see you've got a few options here. So uh, for example, you can radically change Cyprus and turn it, I mean not Cyprus, uh, you, you can you can uh, you can have Crete here with uh, their lack of scissors, so you got a lot of nose hair there, and and you can uh, basically help them become free. What's going on? It's not clicking. Whatever. Anyway, you can liberate Cyprus if you want to do that. You can divide Syria and Palestine right here. You can uh, you know create a Kurdish state and take away a little bit more land than what the Turks would probably usually have. You can give uh, some some th this area over here to the Arabs. Um, it's all up to you, whatever you want to do. Uh, and that's basically all there is to it with the war with Iran. Uh, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about, though. As many of you know, there is a point early on in uh, the game when Alash Orda and Turkestan will go to war. When that happens, you will get this event pop-up, War in Central Asia. You can then choose to either send equipment and manpower to help uh, Alash Orda you can do nothing or you can actually intervene against Turkestan and so that can get you into another war. Of course, if you're going to be wanting to do this, you probably want to have some men on this border. But it's just an example of something that you could do because uh, you, you, there are areas that uh, you can get claims on. As we will see. Well, oh, wait, no, you're at peace right now. But it's possible. You can get claims on, on some of these areas, basically. Just expanding the greater Iranian Empire and whatnot. Let me take off that. And uh, that's, that's I think, good enough for an introductory guide to Iran. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Thank you to my Patreons for supporting it. Uh, and next week, we'll have a new guide. And if you're not a Patreon, I and you want to help decide the direction of the guides that I do every week, I would encourage you to go to patreon.com slash conqueringhistory. There's a link in the description below. And uh, go vote. Thanks for your time. And you all have a great day.